culture eats strategy for breakfast. And it will. It could consume you as well in the illustration I gave you previously. But culture, that culture that you have, if you plan on having this type of a culture, we need to get really aggressive out there and go after those clients over there, whatever it takes, cut the competition, throw it and everything else. If your culture has always been, we're dignified, we're number one on the block, we don't need to sit down and really succumb to high competition, you may have a problem getting that process out there. So it depends what your culture is. Culture is such a powerful tool if it's used well, but if you don't pay attention, if you think you can overcome the culture in just a couple of moments because you said something that you thought was relevant, you may have a problem. Okay, so it really is how widely and deeply the employees hold those values and assumptions. The founder, well, what you're saying violates everything the founder said we should be about. Da, 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 da. And you may have an uprising and have to deal with the uprising on it. You'll see time again, you pick up the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, The Economist, you pick up any business thing, you, you will actually see some type of stories where the culture responded back to the CEO and the CEO is now out or the stockholders voted that person out or whatever happened. Most employees, they'll eventually understand and embrace the culture. Otherwise, they'll end up leaving. They'll, they'll be institutionalized by the daily walking past various artifacts they have, whether it's verbal or visual, just depends what it is. A lot of times that culture originates from the founder, and sometimes founders stick around too long, but it doesn't change the fact they're still in charge and they own the company. So mental models sometimes make it difficult to see the world in new ways because you're always used to doing the same old ways in the same old process. Control system, the social glue, those are the functions of strong cultures. And you have to look as to the aspects of the benefits of that strength. It really depends upon is it an adaptive culture? If it's not, it may need to change. But sometimes it can continue going for many years, even though they haven't changed, but eventually die and be consumed by itself because it didn't pay attention to change around it. It really is, are the employees sticking around? Are the good employees sticking around? Usually the good ones are the first ones to flee when a ship is sinking and, and the poor ones stick around for the performance that is agonizing in the process. So what are the outcomes? Is the performance good? Is it still viable? Is it still cutting edge? That's a big thing. Culture content, you align it with the environment. A misaligned culture ends up with the wrong decisions and behaviors and responds in a, in a negative way to the environment around it. It'll fight back. Uh, culture strength is not the level of a cult, okay? It just depends. Sometimes they say that some of the great entrepreneurs, they build a group of people around them that really focuses and, and, and they, it's like a force field. You're in there and all of a sudden you believe this can be done and you work 140 hours in one week nonstop just because you want to get this thing done. And I have heard stories about that almost like a cult. You'll know it's a cult when they start chanting when they first come in the morning and they shave their heads in a strange shape. So it depends. So be careful. You may not want to be part of that. So make certain the culture is adaptive to the world that's out of it. Make certain there's always some type of learning aspect of it and that the organization learns from its mistakes and it learns as to how it can be adaptable. Um, a, a bicultural thing, you start merging companies together. Some of them have gone horribly wrong and the cultures really hate each other, a mechanistic versus an organic culture. You put them together and they simply don't mix an awful lot of times. But if you're trying to do an audit, look at the artifacts, see what the difference is between them and are they blendable. Look on the different data between them about the cultural conflict and if they're compatible with measure, and then try to find different ways to bridge the cultures if you ever have a merging culture with something new. Here are four different ways of cultures. One is assimilation where everybody lovingly embraces the new one. It really doesn't happen that way, but it looks good in an academic textbook. The deculturization, the acquiring from imposes this culture. We will now do it this way. We are going to fire the following 17 leaders and our new leaders will take over. That kind of shocks everybody and you'll have a lot of people fleeing the ship as quickly as can. Integration, try to see how you can preserve the best of past cultures. And then sometimes 
the merge cultures, you really have one central office and it could be relatively small and the firms keep their own corporate cultures. It's interesting. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, they run Berkshire Hathaway and they run it out of this teeny tiny office in the middle of, 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 of their office, Kansas. And, and they have 38 people working in it. And it's one of the world's biggest companies but they leave, they buy companies, they buy huge chunks of it, they leave them all intact because Warren Buffett is totally committed to the aspect of not micromanaging the other one. So he has a separation thing. You can see it working out there. You'll see somebody else, they go and they buy Twitter and also within the first week, people are gone and everything else and they lose two thirds of the employees. And But heads up, it looks like that it may end up doing better than it was originally. So they did a, a deep, they posted this culture and practice and boom, just like that, it totally changed and it works. So it depends what happens when, when organizations meet. Here are some of the different aspects about how you start merging things together. You want to strengthen it, align the artifacts, introduce some type of culturally consistent rewards and recognition, support workforce stability and communication, here are some of the things that if you're going to go into an organization and create some change, especially if you're merging cultures, what has to be done. Uh, you want to really model the desired culture through the actions of the founders, and the founders are no longer around the leaders. The leaders, one of the biggest dangers you have is never attack the founders' values and personality. Respect it, because no matter what happens, you will have people inside the organization that still believe they should do it the same way it was before, and that's why they're working there. So don't attack it. Just introduce something new to it. Transform that into something more. Build upon the values. The values over here were here, but we really need to sit down and look at this. Here, I'm going to keep the same root of the value, but here's how it's interpreted in today's world. Okay, that's much softer than saying, we got to change. Be careful about making radical statements because people react against the radical statements. Align the artifacts with the desired culture. If you had this type of artifact artwork in the lobby, the main lobby where people walk in every single day and you want to make a change, maybe that's a place you should put a physical artifact of the change that you want it to be. Maybe you have regular announcements on a regular basis. Maybe you go to a Friday morning report. Boom, every Friday something comes out. Every Friday something comes out. That actually can be effective. So it depends what you want. Make certain that you are being consistent with what you're doing and try to sit down and talk, 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 talk. Culture is a lot about talking and persuading people to accept something new if you want to change it. Introduce cultural consistent rewards and recognition. If you have an award ceremony, make certain that you still recognize a lot of the old ones and then gradually introduce other ones or change the overall image as to what that will be. Have, support the aspect of people staying around, support frequent communication, share the stories, keep the rituals. Every year we have this over here. I thought I would have this, but I'm gonna add this to this year. I wanted to have a special treat for you because of the great work you did. Don't damage the old relationships, keep them intact as best you can, and then maybe add some new ones over there. Use attraction, selection, and socialization with different aspects of it. Cultural strength increases through the attraction. Applicants will self-select based upon compatible values, and they'll stick around. Firms select applicants with compatible values. You'll see that as well. In attrition, the ones that have incompatibles, they eventually leave the organization on top of that. Talk all you want, find the culture, and win your vision through the culture. Orientation is the best time to share culture. The C-suite people, those with the chief whatever, chief operating officer, chief human resource, chief marketing officer, chief IT officer, chief executive officer, they should make some type of a show at orientation with the new employees and convey their vision. You know what? It's really best if two or three, even if they can't be there, say, I apologize for not being here that I have this video for you, but I want to share with you some important parts of this area. Those make some of the biggest impacts when employees see that the C-suite executives are involved. Advertise within your organization, your culture, or the culture you want to become. Be careful. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. When you join culture and strategy together, that's the best meal overall. Take care.